I have spent a part of my life in a fight with plastics. But last year, I realized that plastics can, in some cases, save lives. My partner had a serious operation where a tumor the size of half a golf ball was cut out of his brain. It all had a very happy ending, by the way. He is completely cured and with me here today. But how is this story connected with plastics, you may ask? Well, even though it was the year 2017, the doctors and the hospital staff had to use a lot of plastics before, during and after the surgery. The disposable plastics could easily be replaced with eco-friendly materials. But some of the plastics served a greater purpose, like the plastics in the operating tools, for example. Therefore, I can say that plastics had a part in saving my partner's life. So, all plastics are not created all evil and all equal, but some are obviously worse for our planet than others. Plastics are amazing materials, and there's no wonder why humans fell in love with them. We can make them in any shape and form we like. We can make them thin, we can make them hard, and we can even make them to tolerate fire and acid. But they all have one thing in common. They are designed to last forever. And this can be really great if you're making airplanes or medical equipment, but devastating when the plastics escape into nature. In just one century, plastics have changed our lives completely. They are now a part of everything we do, and they're even coming back to us as microplastics in our food. And that is a very scary thought. Plastics are incredibly harmful for nature. I don't have to show you pictures of dying animals and, and plastics. You have all seen them. This is not just happening to albatrosses in the Pacific, but to animals everywhere, and also here in Iceland. Iceland is a small fishing nation that depends on fresh and clean seafood. We should therefore be leading a revolution against plastics, but for some reason we have not come very far. Perhaps it's because Icelanders are super consumers. Our ecological footprint is the highest in the world, and if everyone would consume like us, we would need at least five to six planets to maintain us. Icelanders believed for a long time that we were the cleanest country in the world, and we bragged about this constantly. The times have changed, but some people still think it's true, or they choose to ignore the truth. This state of mind is called trash blindness, and it affects a lot of people in the world. The good news is that trash blindness can easily be cured. For example, if you take people to a beach cleanup, you can witness the moment when people's eyes open. You just have to let them loose for a little bit, and then you can hear when they start swearing <laughs> they have found the trash. When you don't have trash blindness anymore, when your eyes have been opened, you have been changed for good. And this eye-opening experience is one of the aims of our project called Trensum Island, or Keep Iceland Clean. I work on an environmental NGO called Landvernd, and last year we joined forces with the Blue Army. Together, we fight for a clean world, and with thousands of volunteers in the name of Keep Iceland Clean, there have been hundreds of cleanups. Our volunteers are everything from kindergarten students to the president of Iceland. And last year, we even added a new word to our vocabulary, and that's plocka, or plucking. And plucking is the act of plucking trash and jogging or walking at the same time. And last year, last spring, when the snow melted, a lot of people were shocked to see mountains of trash underneath. This motivated the pluggers. Many of them joined the Keep Iceland Clean campaign, and they got a lot of attention in the media. These amazing people spent a lot, of, a lot of their free time cleaning up their neighborhoods, and some even go on boats and kayaks to clean islands and beaches. They don't ask for any rewards, and they are true environmental heroes in my eyes. The Keep Iceland Clean campaign also goes beyond the cleaning. Although it is very necessary to clean, 
It is unfortunately an end of pipe solution. We clean a beach today and the plastics will wash up again tomorrow because the ocean is spitting the plastics back at us. And this is not the kind of future we want for our children. We therefore put a large emphasis on education and ocean literacy. Young students who have participated in our project have come up with great solutions to the, to the, ocean, uh, to the plastic pollution. Just stop using plastics in everything. The answers are right there, and the kids, they don't understand why we haven't fixed the problem already. The truth is, we will probably never stop using disposable products altogether. Some, some items simply need wrappings. For example, I don't think many of us here would walk around with sticky or smelly food in our bare hands, but we need to be smart and swap the plastics into materials that truly and easily biodegrade. Otherwise, we are just shifting the problem, not solving it. I have a few suggestions to consumers, companies and the governments of the world. The key element to fixing the problem is that we all work together and we all need to take brave actions. Sure, we need to recycle, but the most important thing is to reduce the disposable plastics and stop the endless consumption. My advice to consumers is to ask yourself, do you really need this? And think long and hard about this one, because we can save the world by consuming less. If you decide that you truly desperately need this, choose something eco-friendly. And don't be afraid of asking critical questions. If your product has plastic wrappings, talk to the company. We did this recently at my work. Our sandwich shop all of a sudden started using plastic wrappings, and we asked them why. And they actually apologized and changed back to simple paper wrappings. I know it's not always going to be that simple, but it's worth asking. We consumers have enormous power over companies. Let's remember that. We have seen small but important steps taken by companies. For example, a growing number of restaurants have dumped the plastic straws. A few farmers have promised to reduce the wrappings, and some companies offer their products now in, this, in, in uh, biodegradable wrappings. This is all good and very important, but the world needs more than promises and a few small steps. And that is why we need companies to take even bolder actions. My advice to companies is to dare to take the eco-friendly road, and not just when it comes to the product itself, but also when it comes to the wrappings. You may think that you will lose money, but don't worry about it, because the eco-friendly solutions often tend to save you money in the end, and you will have happy customers. And as they say, there is no business to be made on a dead planet. The eco-friendly future I picture in my mind is a world without excess packaging and only with truly biodegradable wrappings. In my future, I picture a world where I can buy orange juice in containers made from the orange peel. And shrimp salad? Wouldn't it be amazing if the shell from the shrimp would be used to make the boxes for the salad? In Iceland, Ari Jonsson already made biodegradable water bottles from algae, and he wants someone to steal the idea. There is no lack of great ideas but lack of putting them on the market. So here's a great opportunity for someone out there who wants to save the world. Lastly, my advice to the governments of the world is to have the courage to change the entire system. The world needs to shift into a real circular economy where the consumer and the, and the companies have no other choice but the eco-friendliest solutions and products. Make the polluters really pay and reward those who choose to do the right thing. Just listen to the kids and do it. It's that simple. We all need to be part of this revolution, because our planet depends on it. It doesn't matter if you're a student, the prime minister, the CEO of a big company or a farmer.
we all want the same thing, a safe and clean home. Nobody wants plastics in our environment, and none of us wants plastics in our food. So, next time you see plastics on the ground, what will you do? You will pick it up and be part of the solution. Thank you. <laughs>